Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, bringing you our weekly marketing, local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member faculty call is going to be September 25th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this week, we've got a relatively short week. There wasn't a lot that has happened in, up, in the update world for local marketing, but surely we're going to share some of our opinions on that and uh, the implications of that. But we've got some good tips to cover as well and hopefully we get into some good questions at the end of the call. Now for this week's uh, update, um, there's a nice study that's come out and some top SEO local myths that we're going to take a look at and debunk some of those and some theory behind that and another study that comes out. Now this is a controversial study to everything that we've talked about a local marketing source. This study indicates that there is no ranking power for Google Plus but we're going to share our opinions and thoughts on that study and exactly uh, the reason why uh, so social aspects are a must for uh, ranking and businesses and, and conversion. Now, for a local business tip this week, um, you know, I, I'm going back to customer segmentation. It's, uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about customer segmentation and why it's important that all small businesses understand their customer segments. Um, and, and exactly which groups they go into and create the appropriate content for that. So that leads into uh, our local internet marketing agency tip of the week. And we're going to take those segments to create customer profiles and profile traits. They're going to help you to create content on a regular basis. Now, weekly update this week, local SEO miss. Well, um, <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of myths centered around local SEO. It's, uh, we've really only begun to understand, well, local SEO has only been around for four years. Um, right from the get-go, there was a lot of confusion. If you remember back in 2009, uh, SEO was all about building links. Local came out. We never had static pages. They were just search results. We couldn't fire links to the results that we wanted to show. Uh, ultimately, Google made those decisions. We understood citations, uh, reviews, and we call um, we call we call the th well. We've got three pillars of local SEO, and uh, one of those pillars is profiles. Uh, another one is citations, and a third being reviews. Well, um, Along those lines of, 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 of recognizing that, really at the end of the day, it's the same thing as acquiring links. We're just kind of looking at it and uh, utilizing different terminology. The fact of the matter is, is you're creating marketing content and exposing it out on the internet. Uh, a citation is a reference to the business. So you take the content, a reference to the business, they get uh, recognized for that uh, piece, of, piece of content. Well. You know, when we started to debunk this, a lot of myths started to come out. Do we fire links to these profile pages? Do we still fire links? Well, what about Google Plus? What does Google Plus have to do with local businesses? Um, are we trying to rank that? Do we need a website do you, do, do, to, to rank? These are all different myths that we could talk about with local SEO. Um, you know, the idea of a website. Well, no, you don't need a website to rank. but have a hard time doing it because your website is your greatest citation. So, uh, look, looking at local SEO myths, um, I always got to take a step back and I ask myself three questions, whether it's a strategy that's viable for a business or not viable for a business. And these are the three questions that you guys should be continually asking yourselves as well, whether you're working with your clients or your local business. And number one, if you're a marketing agency, ask yourself the question, is this strategy, is it going to add value? Is it going to benefit the end user, the customer or the prospect? So if you're taking an article and you're throwing it on an e-sign somewhere in Cyberland, is that really going to help them? Probably not. So article marketing is not the greatest strategy. Question number two, is it good for the business? Is it going to be able to help that business? And if you can't answer yes to both of those, there's no point in asking the third question, but that would be, does it support the marketer? Does it also benefit the marketer? 
So if you can answer yes to all three questions, your strategy is probably a good one. And will help you debunk some of these myths that you may come across with uh, local SEO. Um, another one is, is the fact of all the data that Google shows. Google's got different facets of their business and, and they don't all tend to work well together. You know, Google's in a lot of different types of businesses. They started in the search business, but they're also in the business of trying to extend people's lives. They're also in the business of trying to bring habitat to the moon. They're also in the business of self-driving cars, or free email service, or web browser, or operating system. They're also in hardware business. These are just a few of the businesses that Google actually operates in that are off the top of my head. Um, with all these different online properties that we've got from everything from, from YouTube to formerly Google Places to, to Google Plus, uh, the back end dashboard, um, some of the public profiles that, that you can get up there, the different, even some of the uh, hosting services, uh, music services. These are all different areas that you can have citations and, and, and have your business. Extremely important to have congruency among Google. Understand that. Of course you want consistency of your nap across the internet, but you've got to have congruency across Google with everything, with your description, categories, uh, company name, uh, all of that, all of that wonderful stuff. Interesting. I'm sitting in front of a green screen right now, drinking a cup of coffee that's in a green cup. Wonder if I can put a hole through me. We'll see. Um, so I was going to tell you about a study that really shows that there's no clear evidence that Google Plus drives rankings. This is published on Search Engine Land, a very prominent website, and I wanted to talk about this. So when you start to break down and understand the study, um, going, to, going back to, to statistics class, statistical analysis, uh, there was a terminology, uh, a term that we would use called margin of error. And the margin of error would increase. Um, but another term that we would utilize would, was called sample size. And so if you wanted to go and you created a hypothesis about a certain population, whether it's, let's say it's a population of a high school, 5,000 students, or the population of the entire country or a specific state, um, you know, with 300 million people in the United States, you're not going to poll everybody. So you'd go out and get a sample size. And the larger the sample size is, the smaller margin of error you, you get. And so based on the size of the population and the diversity of the data that you're looking for, you could, you, you could utilize a mathematical equation to determine the optimal sample size. Well, there's a few things I know about sample sizes. Number one, I know that with a population of 300 million in the United States, you only need a sample size of 1,100 to get a statistical margin of error plus or minus 3% or less. We're not really looking to squeeze out a margin of error better than 3%. Because at that point in time, if we took a sample size of 10,000, the margin of error just decreases almost insignificantly. So 300 million, 1,100 people. Well, if you have a population of 50, your sample size you know, is, is going to be rather large. You know, 30 people. It's a, it's a big, big difference. Now, we're talking about the internet. We're talking about websites. And we're talking about billions of websites that have, and, and Google's utilizing hundreds and hundreds of different factors to rank these websites and rank these web properties. So to, to do a good study right off the bat, I want to establish that sample size is extremely important. I'm covering up my microphone here. Apologize for anybody that was listening in. Um, so sample size is extremely important. And in this study that, that I'm going to talk about, it, it's, I'm kind of surprised that it's published on Search Engine Land because their sample size was only looking at three different websites. Um, 
over a four month period. And what they tested is content that was shared within the Google Plus network to see if there was any results. Well, number one, we understand that if we started to optimize today that we've got to maintain at least a six month time period before we start to see positive fruitions of our results. Doesn't mean you're not going to get results after 30 days or even two weeks. But you've got to have sample of a long amount of time. They haven't taken that amount of time. The second thing is that their sample size is way too small. Um, we can't indicate or we can't identify specific industries. Uh, there's a lot of different factors. Um, but looking at the data that they did come out, uh, that they did were able to pull out, um, they did establish, another thing I wanted to point out with the study as well was uh, the, the concept of correlation study. This, this kind of uh, irk, irked me because um, identifying a correlation study is isolating factors and they haven't had the opportunity to properly isolate these, these factors where they could say we make one change here and over a period of time the correlating results is this, this, and this. And so this is not a correlation study. This was let's go out and do a few things and just see the results and see what happens. Meanwhile Google in that four months is doing a variety of different updates. Um, and, and the social side, the social aspect of it, uh, there could be a lot of factors that we can dig into such as how interactive those social properties are. In other words, how many people are actually communicating with them or are they just going posting stuff? Do they actually have followers that are actually engaging with this content? Um, So the, the bottom line is, is they tested social content and did not see any impact in results. One thing that they did mention is that it, it's, it's kind of like a cause and effect, okay? Um, you go ahead and you scratch yourself and, and you get a cut on your arm and you bleed from it, okay? You get a result. Well, what happens if that cut gets infected now? you get a very different result. Well, two things have to happen to get that very different result. A cut and then an infection. The infection doesn't happen without the cut, but the cut itself won't do it. So that's kind of what they are saying here, is that um, you know, they, they particularly, you know, social aspects, you can go ahead and make changes on social things, but making these changes in, its, in, in itself is not going to get the result that you're ultimately looking for. You've got to have other complementing facts to it. So when you're, when you're creating content in the social networks and you go and you post it, what good is that? Well, what happens if that content turns around and actually gets shared? And then they measure that content that is shared throughout the social networks. So if I go and create a fantastic infographic and I put it on my blog and I only share it through social sites and I don't fire any more links at it at all and that content is, is, goes viral, my question is, is that blog post going to rank? Darn tootin' it's going to rank. I haven't done the study for it specifically per se and that's what this study has debunked. You take that infographic and if it goes viral, of course Google wants to send people to your site. Of course they are looking at that type of stuff. And so make sure that your websites have these social plugins in them. All right. Well, um, that comes to the conclusion of this week's update. I do. Uh, I kind of blew by the tip uh, for customer segmentation and I want to talk about that tip. Then I'm going to take a short break and then come back and talk about a tip for a local internet marketing agency. Well, Marketing 101 talks about a term of segmenting your audience or customer segmentation. Um, 
it blew me, it blows me away to this day. You know, I started in an SEO in 2005, and and I got good at it by 2006 and 2007. I was people were asking me for help um, to teach them how to do it and and whatnot. But it wasn't until 08 or 09 that I, the light bulb actually went on for me, and I realized that everything that I was doing with SEO was just marketing. And and so. When, when I started to take a different approach of SEO and, and realize that I, I just got to be a decent marketer and, and if we create content that is going to be consumed by an audience, um, we're going to get exposure on the internet and we're going to get rankings. Well, SEO, search engine optimization, by definition could have the exact same definition that the American Marketing Association says marketing is all about. Go and check it out. Go do a search right now for the American Marketing Association. It's going to tell you something along the lines that you're going to create audience, uh, audience. You're going to create content for an audience. Audience. There you go. Hybrid word. Content for an audience. Audience. Well, you're going to create content for an audience, whether it be prospects or clients at large or an industry at large, and distribute that content to an area where that audience is going to reside or consume that information and have value from it. Okay, so that's SEO. Well, if SEO is marketing and marketing is SEO, then the very first steps of SEO before doing, oh, the infamous keyword research should be segmenting your audience. If SEO is all about creating content for an audience and distributing that content, then why the hell are you not understanding your audience? So why isn't customer segmentation a big glaring word in search engine optimization, SEO, local SEO. Why aren't people talking about that? I mean, you could take Walmart and Target and profile their customers differently. You can take a restaurant that serves hamburgers, McDonald's, and the one up the street, and they're gonna have very, very different customers because these hamburgers are three times price difference different audiences for the same product. So how can a chiropractor create the same content as another chiropractor? Because some chiropractors work with back pain patients, others work for wellness. Two very different perspectives. Two very different professions for that matter. So why are you gonna create content for a back pain chiropractor the same way that you're gonna do for a wellness, okay? What about local areas? You know, I've lived in the United States since 2005 lived in Canada for a while, I also lived in South Korea. One thing I learned about traveling is culture. It's one thing that Americans, in my opinion, don't understand when they say, well, we can travel around our country, we got everything. No, you don't. The one thing you have about traveling is learning about other cultures. And that's the one thing you get to take with you and take home with you. When I was out in the Asian culture, there was a lot of things that they did that were very weird. But there's a few things that I took home with me and adopted into my lifestyle to make me a little bit happier. So geography plays a big part in a particular audience. And the geography, whether it be the geography of one side of town to the other side of town, or one part of the country to the other part of the country, also plays an impact in understanding your customer segment. Okay. Chiropractors, again, I'll use the same example, or dentists, doesn't matter. Some are going after, some are pediatric, some are going after families, some are family oriented, some are going after the single working individual. So any business wants to focus on a small handful of different customer segments, three to five segments. Anything more than that, your marketing message is going to get diverted. Plain and simple. Doesn't mean it can't be done. So there's steps involved in the segmenting your audience. And basically, you want to get them segmented into different groups that you can create what are called profile traits for each of those different segments. You may label each segment. The newcomers, the newbies, the veterans, it doesn't matter what you label them. But the more that you can learn about each of these groups and use adjectives in each for each group and have a list of these adjectives, 
along with local jargon and industry jargon, dentist, dentistry, teeth whitening, all of that wonderful stuff. You now have all the appropriate keywords to effectively create the appropriate content that's going to speak to the right audience and get distributed. And when you're speaking specifically to an audience, that's the type of content that's ultimately going to get shared and further exposed on the internet. So learn about customer segmentation. Local Marketing Source um, has just launched a, uh, a free marketing course. Uh, we've got a video in there on customer segmentation. If you're an LMS student, get into the portal, go and watch that customer segmentation video. It's available, uh, the video is also available on the Local Marketing Source YouTube channel. At the end of this video, just go ahead and, uh, and you can subscribe to that channel. Um, all right, I'm going to take a few moments and I'll be right back and we'll talk about a tip for a local internet marketing agency. All right. Um, so I was just talking about customer segmentation and I want to talk a little bit further now uh, taking those customer segments to create profile tra traits, profile traits <laughs> to create content. Guys, this is a little secret. Um, everything about marketing a local business on the internet is, is just creating content, okay? Whether it's written content, um, visual content, or, or video, or, or audio. It's all content, that's, that's it. Uh, that's all marketing really is, right, is, is content. And it's just a matter of getting these different types of content and knowing what to create and where to put it for what type of business. Well, you know, there's a, there's a few cookie cutter approaches. We know we got to have so many profiles. Um, but for example, on each of these profiles, we're going to have descriptions. Some descriptions have 420 characters available, some have 560, some only have 160. Well, where are you going to get these descriptions? You're sure as hell not going to go and create a description for every single profile, a unique description. You're going to have a standard sheet for every one of your clients and you're going to copy and paste the different descriptions. Well, I sure hope you would do that. Well, when you go and create your first profile and you're filling it out, is that when you're going to create your description? I would hope not, because your description is a very important aspect. We know that you want to utilize as many characters as possible, and we want to know, we know that there's certain elements of information in a description, i.e. that wonderful word of compelling. Well, if you think about you're a reader, What's going to compel you to call that chiropractor or that dentist over another one? Well, if it's a family-oriented practice, you're going to talk about how warm and welcoming the environment is. Maybe throw a testimonial in there that's specific to that type of audience. You see where I'm starting to go now. So, you're working with your customers or you've got your local business. And you want to identify three to five different tra uh, profiles, customer segments. Um, after watching the customer segmentation video, you're going to understand that, you know, how, how, how to identify what the right number is and specifically how to label each of these different segments. Now, with those segments, we're going to use the example of a chiropractor uh, working in the world with back pain. Um, and we're going to identify, just off the top of my head, three different, three different segments. Well, back pain. Uh, let's think about this for a second. Um, somebody that's injured. Okay, got into a car accident. Um, so, somebody that injured themselves um, just hurt themselves. There's one segment right there. Somebody that's hurt themselves and has lower back pain and has been going on for a minimum of six months um, because Maybe we want to focus on adults and, and, and not, not children. There's some aspects of it, but I'll get into that in a minute. So that's your first segment right there, but you're still a back pain specialist chiropractor. How else could you possibly get back pain? Well, through pinched nerves. Not necessarily you've hurt yourself in a car accident or, or whatnot, but you are continually growing and your pain is getting worse and worse and worse as life goes on. And so your mobility starts to fall down. You start to have different symptoms of regular headaches or regular 
migraines. You don't feel as free movement anymore. You know, a different type of, of segment. Um, and then a third example uh, for, for a pain specialist would be um, joint pain. You know, I know, I, I get it uh, all the way through with my, um, all the way down through my arm, right through, right through here on this side right here. And I know that when I press right here on this elbow, I feel it right now, I can feel the pain shooting all the way down. Well, my chiropractor tends to help with that type of, of pain. Um, it's not, uh, it's, it, it comes from typing, it comes from all the little movements that our hands aren't specific to, and so I do a variety of different stretches all the time to be able to help all that out. And so now you can identify three different, three different segments. Well, with the person that's hurt themselves, um, you know, what, what would be their typical lifestyle? Let's, you know, let's think about this for a moment. You get into a car accident and you, uh, you hurt yourself, you're hurt one day you're healthy, the next day you're unhealthy, it's, it's immediate, um, you're feeling a tremendous amount of, of frustration. Right off the bat, you haven't had any learning curves on how life is gonna be a little bit different. Um, you are struggling for answers. Um, you're, 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 you've got a variety of different questions. You know, is this gonna get better? How long is it? Can I see an image of it? Uh, what's worst case scenario? What's best case scenario? Um, you know, these are just all questions I'm coming up with at the top of my head trying to put myself into the shoes of that particular individual. Once I start to think about all of these different questions and whatnot, you, you see that there's different adjectives that I've been pulling out. Well, I'll start putting those adjectives in, in, into a list. And underneath that customer profile, you know, scared. The buyer of that service is scared. If I hurt myself in a car accident yesterday and I know I need to go see a chiropractor, I'm gonna be scared. But now me as an educated chi patient of chiropractic, I don't live in fear because of my arm. So not all patients of chiropractors live in fear. Well, this is some of the terminology that ultimately could be used to resonate specifically with that audience. And that's the type of content that really, when you narrow it down, is really gonna get it down. So you, you segment your audience and then create these profile traits. You follow that, again, it's all in the video. But please, please do this. It will vastly help you create content, whether it be content on the web page, whether it's a video, whether it's going out and finding the right testimonials, guys. Or when, when, when the doctor's sitting in front of a patient and asks the patient for a testimonial, that patient's going to be, well, what the hell do I say? Well, if you've got a profile trait and you're marketing and centered around that, that doctor or you as the marketer is going to say to that patient and say, well, before you came here, were you a little scared? You know, were you scared that you didn't know what to do about your pain? Well, yeah. And how did you feel when, you know, you started to speak with Doc, the doctor about it. Oh my God, well, he did this and he did that. Well, there you go. Because I identified that a certain buyer of that service shared fear and then you evoke that emotion back into the individual that's gonna give you the testimonial, that's gold. That's gold testimonial. That's, you can't get better than that. Segment your audience, create profile traits extremely important in search engine optimization in my opinion and still to this day it blows me away that sites like search engine land just don't talk about this shit almost frustrates me irks me it's almost like reviews three four years ago we were talking about reviews and the aspects of it and the SEO community kept saying reviews do nothing bullshit they do nothing the review is the quintessential electronic form of word of mouth advertising. Word of mouth advertising has always been the best form of advertising. Reviews have the greatest impact on influencing conversion. Maybe against the video testimonials, but pretty soon, it won't be long before Google's got it all set up that instead of typing in a review, 
boom, they hit a button, it attaches, it turns on their webcam, they leave a video review. Right there. Video review. That's your testimonial. Yeah, I can keep going on. So on that note, guys, I'm going to open the floor to any questions. Well, Ed's got a nice comment here. He says, you know, that was excellent information and shows me the importance of being connected with my content through social media. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ed. I, uh, I, uh, I really appreciate the, the feedback. Now, you also ask, please give an example of SEO and segmentation. Um, search, engine, uh, search engine optimization and segmentation. Um, I believe you probably wrote that question prior to me getting into it because uh, I've been talking about it for some time. But I'm more than happy to clarify that question. Uh, or if you want to uh, raise your hand, I can unmute you and we can have a nice discussion about it. Um, or please let me know if I've satisfied your answer. I could give another example of SEO and segmentation if you'd like. That's what I thought. He said, yes, I asked before you answered. Intuition, huh, Ed? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, we, we overcomplicate, overcomplicate the search engine optimization game. It's uh, far too often that people spin their tires on keyword research and get all hung up. I got to get this straight and then I got, you know, where am I going to, what am I going to, uh, no, no. Just take a step back. Look at the business in question. Look at the audience in question. What the hell is that audience doing? Do you think they're reading the local newspaper? Then work like hell to get some content into the local publication. Do you think some of these audience members are members of the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah or no? Maybe, maybe not. If they are, get that business involved in the local chamber. All the different profiles that are out there, Google, Yahoo, Bing, Yelp, Angie's List, Judy's Book. Go and look at the SEO videos. Well, these are all places that you've got to be. And there's just best practices to filling out those profiles. Thoroughly, accurately, descriptively. Hey, well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.